Hey. Cool. Jake Hamilton. Good day, Chicago. Guys, so good to see you. Congratulations on this. How are you guys doing today? Amazing, mate. I just want to say your interviews are incredible. I what? love I love watching your interviews. So. Oh my god, thank you so much. Oh my god, now I have to like really step my game up. Now I've got to like this earn a this. Very pleasant surprise for me. I'm going red. That's oh my god, up. dude. Thank you. That's huge. Thank you so much. Um, I got to tell you, whenever I watch Vikings, this one or the previous series, every time I watch an episode, it reconfirms that I absolutely do not have what it takes to have survived that time of history. Good question. <laughs> like I'd be dead like instantly. So I'm curious, put yourself in the time of the Vikings. Would you have flourished? Like how long do you think that you would have survived? I wouldn't have lasted a day, not a day. I'm with not you. Not with that attitude. <laughs> true, true. I, I probably wouldn't have survived. I mean, just going straight there from where I am now, I wouldn't have survived long unless I kind of found a nook or a cranny being a blacksmith or something or a farmer or something. I'm not sure if I could be a warrior like these gentlemen were. But I, honestly, I don't think I would have lasted a day. I, I'm completely with you on that. No, I don't think anyone would last more than a day or two, to be honest with you. I mean, let's cut to the chase. We're actors um, sat very comfortably at home in the 21st century. And if we gave any other answer, we would definitely be dead because that sort of false hope would uh, not last very well. I'm going to back myself. I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to survive. I'm going to you have what it takes. I'm going to scrap for it. Yeah, man. Come on. I think. <laughs> this might sound a bit arrogant. I, I, I think that people would have thought I would have been a threat and would have got rid of me. Um, yeah, that's not good. Th you want to be a little bit, um, a little bit boring, <laughs> so people will look past you. Well, then maybe you. I would have been fine then. <laughs> oh, not at all, Jake. You've survived a very long time. I think, yeah, I think for me, I realised there is an inner Viking inside me that I was so thankful to finally get to, you know, pull out. Um, I'm an experienced horse rider. I, you know, I'm a pretty physical person. I love sports. I love moving. And I think I look pretty kick-ass in an arm, in a suit of armor. So I think I, I think I'd yeah. survive. <laughs> yeah. I think I would have survived as well because, you know, that period in history, I would have been able to choose my own destiny more or less, you know, if I didn't want to marry, I wouldn't marry, you know, because issues with childbirth and being a woman, you know, it's not, it's not easy. So I think I would survive as well. I mean, I would have, you know, fought my way through. Definitely. I love that. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Um, I asked that question to, uh, to your, your male co-stars and they all admitted that they would die. So I love that you two said that you had what it takes. That makes me so beyond happy. That is fantastic. Isn't that just a testament to how bad a Viking women yes, are? Yes, that's exactly. Honestly, I feel like yeah. that, that moment is like a microcosm example of what this show is. And doesn't it sort of like put a bad day in perspective? You're like, oh man, the Wi-Fi is not working on my phone. And then you see like the sort of things that these people are going through literally just to survive to the end of the day. Like it really... It's one of those kind of like life altering perspective sort of shows in a weird way. Oh, definitely. It, it makes you appreciate everything you got. It, it really does. Because you do have to, you know, put yourself into that situation for a limited time with your trailer in sight, <laughs> with your parfait latte coming. So, but you, yeah, you get a sniff of it and makes you appreciate what you got. Speaking of that latte, if Game of Thrones has taught us anything, it's make sure the latte is out of the shot before yes. you guys shoot. That's, a, that's very important. I mean, when you're doing scenes with your best friend being strangled to death in front of your eyes and, you know, you're doing scenes where, you know, the, your loved ones risk their life and they die because of you. They die so you can accomplish your goals and to carry that. Um, yeah, we're always joking. I said, we're like, it's not an easy life. And especially no. for Freitas, it's like, if it's not oh, you know, so being hard. attacked in the forest by random men, it's you know, being, yeah. you know, being a survivor of sexual assault or to see your loved ones being shipped away to fight for your freedom. It's, it's a difficult time you know, for them. It's hard to navigate. So I'm, I'm thankful, even though I think we would have survived, we live today. You know, yeah. One of the things that I most love about this show is that honestly, no one is safe. It doesn't matter who you are in the show. No matter who you are, you're at the risk of a, of a really brutal death. But the death scenes are always so awesome. So without getting into spoilers, 
do you want to make it to the final episode or do you want to have a really badass, awesome, memorable, brutal death scene? I want it both, Jake. <laughs> you want the death scene yeah. in the last episode? Yeah, damn straight. Like you gotta, you gotta aim tough. Oh yeah, all actors, you know, if they know that they're going to be uh, killed off, the one thing that they would request is at least give me a good death scene. Yeah, and if it could be in the final episode, that would be nice. I'm fortunate in that Harold existed in real life and he was a little bit older when he died. So, so I, I know that I've got, I've got some, some time left. Um, which is unless they bring in Quentin Tarantino and he just changes everything. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy those surprises for sure, but I do think there is certainly things that Leif Erikson is known for and needs to tick off before that happens. Yeah. Yeah, we worked out that I think it's two significant name characters die every single episode. So just to make it like to halfway through season one, you're doing really, really it's a well. Victory. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, Freydis comes into the world and is almost kamikaze like mission you know where she is so laser focused on achieving her goal of revenge and she's willing to die for it she's a true pagan and she knows that she's going to die a hero's death and she's going to sit at the table with odin and the with the valkyries and she's gonna you know have a great old time up there um so yeah just like caroline says it's an aspect of our characters that you know i hope hopefully it comes across and that makes it really interesting with the dynamic of, of the Christians, you know, because they, I don't know, they think they're going to heaven. I don't know. I don't know what they're up to, but <laughs> they're, they're apparently scared of dying, you know, if we're hearing the voice correctly. <laughs> well, I think, you know, what is so fierce, I mean, to character, to play, to portray these awesome women is that they're not afraid to die. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's like the main thing. They're so strong in their beliefs. You know, they're so strong in the cause. And you have to put that into the character. And that kind of reflects on the way how you think about your character. Because that's like the, Yal Hokan is not afraid to die. I mean, you know, she's not, she's, if she dies, she's going to Valhalla anyway, you know. But that's so strong in the core of her, of her character, you know. Rap, I've got to say the production value on the show it's such an insane world to dive into. It's unlike anything that any of us have ever experienced. So what's the one thing that helps you kind of get there as an actor? Is it, is it the costumes, the shooting locations, the sets, the props? Like what's the thing that helps you forget the real world? That's exactly what I was going to say. It would be the costumes, the set, because uh, the sets are amazing and the costumes are all handmade, tailor-made. They're incredible. So once you're in makeup, you're in the costume, you arrive at the set uh there's yeah what did jeb say no acting required is you know exactly as as uh, as you see it on screen you know it's just fantastic and you're then surrounded and they're bringing a hundred uh, you know viking extras who are you know been doing it for over a decade and they look the part they sound the part they're enthusiastic they're yelling and screaming and shouting and stomping and if you've got to get up and deliver a speech as a king then you've got to you've got to go some to try and silence that crowd of of uh of Irish Vikings who uh, who just who were just there to to whip up an atmosphere. So um, yeah, it's it's just fantastic. The tattoos. Oh, I've really? Sleeves. I've got two sleeves, and yeah, putting those on is a real like Viking transformation moment because it's oh. a lot of ink, man. It's yes, ink. I'd say all of it, man. Like it's quite awe inspiring to be both in the landscapes that we were in but also in like in the in the back lot in the tank in the boat that's being held by cranes and moving all around i think like it's just such a wonderful reminder that it takes a village to create these epic sequences and um yeah i'd say i'd say also the costume is huge and the tattoos as well i was i was lucky enough to design my own tattoos which was quite cool and um yeah all of it i mean everything every aspect helps all of that helps like the costumes uh, are invaluable having a real sense of a green screen is great being able to hold a sword instead of a green tennis ball is brilliant um but the truth is people haven't changed we're, we're all the same like the the manner in which we survive and fail to survive are the same um i mean what we were looking at a pandemic and a potential world war right at the moment and yeah, I mean, that's what was going on back then. The only difference is the means of those two things and the means of surviving those things. But you know, what we've never worked out is how to learn from going through those situations. Olympic 
Oh, we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> 